So for my bachelor's degree, I did psychology um, at Augustana, which is like the tiny U of A campus. It's out in Camrose. That's where I first started to kind of develop my ideas of what I wanted to do as an SLP. I was never really a fan of research. I was a research assistant and uh, it was great and all, but just it didn't appeal to me. But I really, really love art. And I believe that a lot of communication can happen through visual art forms. So I was trying to blend my love of speech language pathology and my love of drawing and art. And what I ended up doing is creating kind of like a visual kind of essay for parents and family members who have themselves or have a family member that is diagnosed with aphasia or childhood apraxia of speech. And that was really, really well received and which was kind of weird because I just kind of doodled ideas that I had in my head and everyone's like, whoa, what is this? And I was like, oh, it's, it's just what I do. So um, I kind of realized that there was this big lack in research for just tools like that, like tools for people outside of speech language pathology. So I kind of thought about it for a while and then I ended up working. So sorry, I finished my bachelor's and then I went and worked as a school counselor for a while. So I was in the school systems and I made quite a few friends with teachers um, and they themselves had a bunch of um, assistants come through their classroom and work with kids. And they would come to me and ask me about like what the speech language pathologist was doing. And I realized there was this kind of disconnect between teachers and SLPs of what we're actually even doing. And I said, well, are there any supports for you, for you to do in your classrooms with the kids with any speech? And they said, no, we have nothing. We have lips, which I was like, well, okay, that's for reading, but <laughs> okay. Um, but nothing for speech, hey? And they said, no. So then I had this idea that I wanted to write children's books specifically for kindergartners, like, like a children's book that's illustrated that discusses and teaches the, the kids and the, um, the teachers how to make like an L sound. So it could be like Larry the Louse going on an adventure in L land and it talks all about how to make L sounds and it's like a read aloud and the kids get to participate. Um, so that's kind of what I wanna do outside of the master's program. I think seeing the brain for the first time, like kind of in person, because I, in my, in my degree, I spent a lot of time in neurobiology. So I got to see like a lot of pictures and stuff, but never got to see like the brain itself. So, and like, well, I guess we didn't really see it because we were on Zoom, but I don't know. It was just a different experience. I thought it was so cool. Oh, I was so bad at it. So I'm originally from Edson, Alberta. So like super rural, there's like 8,000 people here, super teeny tiny. And I thought that we were going to have some classes online. So although it's just two hours away for me, I was like, well, I should probably move to the city. So I was kind of by myself for hours on end in my little like bachelor pad, which is like a one room apartment. So, and I don't typically do well with isolation. It's really hard for me to set up my area since I live in a, a hobbit hole. So <laughs> I have a desk and a bed and a TV. And sometimes I work on my bed and sometimes I work on, at my desk. Oh my God, I was working. Um, so, so somehow they accessed my work email. I have no idea how, cause I did not put my work email like at all. And I got an email from the U of A and I'm like, and it was like decision on your application. Oh, so also I should say the first time I got rejected, which is why I, um, kind of took some time off, worked in mental health, just did some stuff. Um, I upgraded some of my prereqs cause they were good. They just weren't fantastic. So I made them fantastic. So I was like, why, why is the U of A emailing me on my work email? So I looked at it and I had to read it like five times. Cause I was like, there's no way, there's no way that I got in. Cause I was like, man, I'm probably not getting in, whatever. For the rest of the day, I was like, I just kind of want to go home and celebrate. Cause it's been like a long haul getting into this program. Oh, don't give up. Like if you think that like everybody in here is like just a genius and got in their first try and they're all fabulous and perfect. Yes, we are all fabulous and perfect, obviously, but like it takes time and that's fine. Like, um, I think real world experience is really helpful and really good to consider. So if you don't get in the first time, don't give up. Some people take like six tries to get in and that's, that's just the way it goes. Um, but if you're really passionate and you know that this is where you belong and you know that you're going to help a lot of people being in this program, then don't give up because your future clients will thank you.